This is uh, Ian, Sloan Fellows video blog, and I'm in another part of the Media Lab right now and uh, checking out some of the more cool open house activities and displays that uh, they're letting people walk around and see. And uh, it's a pretty incredible place, lots of gadgets and uh, interesting. Uh, sometimes maybe you can't figure out quite what it is when you look at it, but uh, there's people around who will explain what's going on. I'm not sure I'm going to interrupt anybody with, uh, with, with my questions right now, but just kind of take a look at the displays and see what uh, some of the stuff that the folks at the MIT Media Lab are working on. Excuse, excuse me. It has the ability to do either or both. And, uh, All right, so there's a, ro a robot display going on over here. I'm going to check that out. Actually, some of these robots, they look familiar. I might have seen them on a TV show or maybe at the MIT Museum before. Um, they're at rest right now. I've seen them on a TV show before. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've gotten a little bit of press. Yeah. Do, do, do you work on both of these? Uh, I, I'm just starting, but yes, I'm working on these. Uh -huh. So what's the, what's the purpose of this particular display? Um, so uh, we started with Nexi. Okay. And Nexi's main purpose is, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, it's Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Um, her, her main purpose is, is to interact with, with uh, people. Okay. And so it's it's mobile, dexterous, and social. So uh, we started kind of, or, uh, this lab started with Leo in here. Um, and Leo. Uh, Leo is that fuzzy ground looking thing? Yeah. Those are better. <laughs> 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 Um, but uh, Leo started off as kind of a social creature um, that was really meant to explore uh, human-robot interaction. Okay. And um, uh, I think we, we had the, the lab had Leo for, for quite a number of years, and um, we wanted to move to something you know a little bit more mobile. Okay. Um, and so we got a mobile base, and we worked with a couple of labs. We worked with uh, University of Massachusetts, um, and we we we, we, we got their uh, U-Bot base, which okay. is this uh, looks like kind of a Segway base in, in the arms. Okay. And um, can I get a little bit closer to it? Or sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I want to make sure. Don't. Yeah. Um, and this is this is Matt, by the way, and this is Nexi. Okay. Uh, we're moving more into a multi-robot thing too. So. What, what does multi-robot mean? Um, well, in this case, uh, we're interested in kind of the group dynamics. Okay. So, so uh, you know, in this case, we, you know, we're, we're looking at how Nexi can actually interact with large groups, not just single people, but large groups. Okay. Now. And we wanted to also use another robot to you know, add to that group and to have communication between robots and humans. Okay. And we had, I don't think there's been a lot of studies where uh, you have robot, robot, human. Right. Where uh, communication between the robots is actually important for the human and, and understanding um, how robots can communicate in a way that humans can understand and interpret those kind of Right. So picking up the dynamics between these two robots yeah. interacting and then humans can figure out what's going on. So exactly. it's not just like a silent connection. There's something else going on that people can figure out? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Um, so yeah, so uh, and also just kind of exploring all kinds of uh, you know uh, psychological dynamics. So um, you know we like to stay certain distances away from robots. This would be very awkward, you know, if I were interacting with a robot this closely. Okay. But for a robot, that's that's perfectly fine. So, okay. So really, it's about uh, creating behaviors that are natural for humans. And also, uh, you know, between two robots and a human, what's natural between all of those? Right. So, um, so uh, we just brought up Maddox last night. Okay. Though um, there's there's a few issues we we, we don't want to really show it until it's just right. So, can you explain the hardware a little bit about how how this works? Yeah. So. Um, so in this case, uh, we have, again, the U-Bot um, kind of design starting right. off. Um, we have a base here for a Hakuyo. Uh, there's a Hakuyo uh, sensor over there. So it's a, a video sensor that will see if something's in front of it? Yeah, Is that it's the like idea? a range finder. Okay. So it gives you kind of a one-dimensional, um, yeah, just sort of a, a two-dimensional plane across a field. Okay. So you get kind of like legs and like chairs and things. Right. Um, and it's used for mapping. Um, and then this is also the Segway base. So this can, um, it actually, it has the ability to balance, but 
it's, this costs so much, we're not really willing to risk the cost of it falling down even once. So right. we don't we don't actually use the Segway base. So the, the, this is a real Segway base that you because you use the term you you, you robot or something. So um, so yeah. So there's I mean. I, I'm, I'm calling it a Segway base. Right. It's not actually a Segway. Okay, it's an, um, another product that's similar to that. It, it's a research tool, yeah. So it was, it was built by University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Okay. And they um, they are studying kind of the dynamic. So, so one of the nice things about uh, this is that you have this whole dynamic base here. Right. Where you have the inertias are constantly changing. Uh, and they're, you know, they have a, they have a demonstration of, of their robot throwing a ball. Okay. And it's really amazing. It looks really natural, and it's just kind of on a base, and it's it's got these arms, and it's a really complex dynamics problem. Right. Um, and uh, we we're working with them, so we they, they provided us with a, a base. Okay. Um, we kind of took those designs and, and changed them a little bit for this one. This was their original base. Right. Um, this is the Generation One. This is the Gen One. This is the Gen Two. I mean, they look they look similar in many respects. This one's shorter though, has a slightly different color on the head, and what I mean, there must be some other major differences going on too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I think it's a, it's actually lighter this this robot. So okay. It can it can kind of balance a lot easier than this one. Right. There's there's a, there's if you imagine kind of an inverted pendulum. Okay. There's a really heavy top to this one, whereas in this one it's a little bit lighter on the top. Um, the other one here, uh, we have some uh, uh, Mecha Arms. It's a company, uh, MEKA, Mecha okay. Robotics. And, um, and we've been using their arms, but we wanted a little bit extra um, feedback. So we started to use these Zytome arms. Okay. And when we did that, we found that the arms were quite a bit taller. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> and so we had to increase the base. We had to oh, I see. So that's why it's taller. this one is taller than exactly. that one, mainly because of the arms. Right. And so this one is going to have significantly better uh, manipulation abilities. Okay. And uh, Nexi will. Now, I also see, and I've seen this before on the um, Kiz Kismet, I think, was the name of the robot. It could move its eyebrows and things like that. That's yeah. that's to show expressiveness. and. Right. And that's it's, it's, what we've really found is that's extremely important for human interaction. Okay. Um, humans uh, uh, like to really associate with, with other creatures that um, can express emotion. Okay. And that's through fa facial gestures. So besides the eyebrows, what else would happen if this robot was reacting to a human being? You could, you could, so I'm sorry. So you can also couple the facial expressions with okay. actual hand gestures. So the robot can give you an excited face and tell you that it's happy, but it can also give you a thumbs up. So okay. you know, coupling those two expressive capabilities really brings out, like, it really makes people, there's a sense of, this is a human, this right. is almost a human creature, and it makes people want to be engaged with it a lot more. Rather than being like the stiff stereotype Exactly, of a robot. it's not just a statue, it's actually moving things, and it's becoming a little more fluid in its actions and people, it's more believable to people. Right, that's really cool. So, and one, one last thing, I mean, this is, it's, it's a kind of a kid-sized uh, robot. Is that by accident, or is that just relating to the size of the, the base and how well it rocks so, back and forth? But, so that's really intentional by design. Okay. Um, so one of the things is that we want to get away from the intimidating robot syndrome yep. that so many people <laughs> fear. Um, so we want to keep the robot sort of at a size where it's not as intimidating for people. Right. So if it were as tall as you or as tall as I, you know, little kids may be frightened by that. So right. we want to try to keep it, you know, at a certain height so people aren't as intimidated by it. Have, have you been testing it with children at all, or is it mostly people in the that work here in the lab? So any, uh, we've done a few experiments, but all of the experiments have been done with um, adults. Okay. We had some children come here and sort of check out the robot, see its functionality. What we find is that children are either terrified of it or they love it. So we try to find a, a, a healthy balance, and how we do that is, again, by design. So you can see the face is very, very human-like, but the rest of the body is all exposed, just right. wires, computers. That's so that people, particularly children, understand that, yes, it's almost a human thing, Right. But it's also a machine, okay. and it's clear to them that they know it's just a machine. When, when you say that kids are terrified, is it usually age, or can it just a random thing? It's a random thing. Okay. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It's it's very random. Okay. Well, thank thanks so much for taking the time to explain. I hope I can see them in action. Sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And also, so we have these two new robots here oh, okay. that don't have names yet. So right. We have this little name that robot competition. You should definitely submit your vote for that. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot for taking the time. Bye-bye.
How cool is that?